Okay, so I've created my reality capture folder. I just called it RC Sidewalk Test. And I have my cache folder, and I've just imported um, uh, these series of photos. And this is just a test. These are not great. This is something that will just resolve really fast, and it's not going to be good photogrammetry or anything like that. But it's just so that we can see the process. So there's the cache folder. So um, when I open up reality capture, it's going to say that it can't find the other folder, so that it's putting it back into the temp folder. So what we do is, um, I'll just remind me later that. So under workflow, we hit settings. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is make sure that our cache location is set to our correct folder. So you go to custom, and then it'll give you this warning message. And then you have to navigate to your folder. So there's our sidewalk test cache. You hit OK, close, close, and then you restart reality capture. Okay, so you restart reality capture now, and okay, boom. And so um, then what we want to do is we want to load up our images. So we select folder, and we uh, navigate to our images, which is here. Boom, 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 and hit okay. And it's going to go through the process, 18 images. And then um, let's look at alignment and hit settings. So these are my settings for alignment. I have a max features per uh, megapixel. I don't know what that actually means, actually MPX, but it's 40,000. Um, and then max features per image is 80,000. Image overlap is set to low. Um, image downscale factor is set to one. And my max feature reprojection error is at two. I think it's at 2.3 is the default. And then the only other thing that I set is down here usually is the detector sensitivity is set to ultra. That has to do with the quality of your uh, chip on your camera. Um, and then with that, I just hit Align, and it's going to align uh, the images now. So it's going to take a few minutes for that. So once that's done, I'll come back. OK, so the alignment's done, uh, and it actually did a pretty good job. It got everything. You can see 18 of 18 cameras. And so now I'm going to set my reconstruction region. You can see it's just way too large for what I actually want, right? So I'm going to go into the go to scene go into the top view, right? And I'm just going to kind of drag in these things um, to where we want them. I was going to show one other thing, but I'm not going to bother with that right now. It's, you can see that it's the, the, um, the thing itself is a little bit off. And so what I'm going to actually do here is I am going to go to Reconstruction and hit Define Ground Plane. And that's just going to allow me to rotate this however I want. So I want to get that line straight, actually. And then I'm going to come to the front view and just make sure that it's... So the front view looks actually pretty good, but let's go to the side view. Yeah, side view. So I'm going to flatten that out a little tiny bit. That's all I'm going to really do. And then I'm going to come here and go set region automatically under construction region. And it'll square it off, but it'll still be too big. So I'll come to the scene view, hit the top view, and then I'll come in here and I'll pull this in because we're just going to only reconstruct a small portion of the area that we so I'm going to come here like that, and that we're just going to get this one little area right in here. Come to perspective view, and just make sure that we have the whole thing. That looks good. And I could hit reset view so that it kind of zooms into it, and I could then close that out and uh, save our project. So we'll just call this. Uh, copy the name from there, put in here, save, and save. And um, lately, like I said, normally I've been doing my reconstruction in high detail, but I want this to go fast. So I'm just going to hit normal detail, and it's going to start processing it. And once it's done, uh, I will come back. OK, so our model's been processed, and this is basically what we get. Uh, which is actually not too bad. Obviously, that's a little bit chunky there, but whatever, it doesn't really matter for what we're doing. So now what I would do is coming over here into the reconstruction area where we have our options, I'm going to hit advanced, and then I'm going to say select marginal triangles. And you can see that it selects all of those edge pieces that we actually don't usually want, right? And then I just go filter selection. Right? Now that's done, right? Sometimes it leaves those ugly edges, right? Like you can see. So I'll just kind of click on this box and then I can like push it in, 
push it in a little tiny bit, push it in, even though I could just clean that up in Houdini too. And then I would come to scene and under clipping box, I say create from reconstruction region. And then now it just kind of cleans up those edges, right? So now we basically have some basic decent geo that looks pretty good. And I'm gonna come over here to the reconstruction. And if I look at my model, I can see that it's 6.2 million tries. And in, for something like this, I'm going to say, okay, let's just make that a million. So I'm going to come to the Simplify tool. And instead of 12, I'm going to type in 1 million. And I'm going to hit Simplify. And it's going to run through its process, which will go pretty quick. So I'll just stay on the line. And slowing down. Okay, so that's done. So now we've got our model now that's um, a million uh, polygons. It doesn't even actually look that different. And uh, one thing that we can do is then I would hit colorize. And that's just going to actually do the, your vertex coloring, not your texturing or anything like that. And it just gives you, um, you know, a point, uh, basically color on the vertex. And that's probably going to take a little bit. Oh, no, it actually happened pretty fast. Oh, there it goes. It's still going. Sorry for that noise. Alright, so that took about two minutes or something like that, but the coloring is done so we can see basically what it's going to look like with the vertex coloring. And um, so that's it really. Now what we need to do is just go to here to the unwrap section. And like I said, you want to set this maximal texture count to something like 20. And I set my maximal texture resolution to 8192 by 8192. And then I hit unwrap and the, the unwrapping portion of it will go pretty quick. Right? So, um, you just do that and you'll see it's creating your UVs and when it comes back you can see kind of whoops the density of your UVs right so if you were to zoom in there really tight I don't this is probably it's the interface on reality capture is really awful how you have to move around so you can see it's pretty dense so we got some good UVs so we don't need UVs anymore we don't need the simplify tool we don't need any more selection on the scene I'm just going to reset the view and the last thing that we would do is just coming over here under the reconstruction, you hit texture and it's going to run through texturing. And this is going to take a little while, so I'm going to stop and when it's done, I'll come back. But really, actually, this is pretty much it. So um, once this is done, we just have to export the model and, uh, and we'll look at those settings because you have to make sure that you export it with the correct settings with the, that UDIM property that I was talking to you about. So, let me just cancel this and, uh, the, and I'll see you when the thing is done. Okay, so our model's been processed and this is basically what we get, uh, which is actually not too bad. Obviously, it's a little bit chunky there, but whatever, it doesn't really matter for what we're doing. So now what I would do is coming over here into the reconstruction area where we have our options, I'm gonna hit advanced and then I'm gonna say select marginal triangles and you can see that it selects all of those edge pieces that we actually don't usually want right and then I just go filter selection right now that's done right sometimes it leaves those ugly edges right like you can see so I'll just kind of click on this box and then I can like push it in push it in a little tiny bit push it in even though I could just clean that up in Houdini too and then I would come to scene and under clipping box, I say create from reconstruction region. And then now it just kind of cleans up those edges, right? So now we basically have some basic decent geo that looks pretty good. And I'm gonna come over here to the reconstruction. And if I look at my model, I can see that it's 6.2 million tries. And in, for something like this, I'm gonna say, okay, let's just make that a million. So I'm gonna come to the simplify tool. And instead of 12, I'm gonna type in 1 million. I'm gonna hit simplify. 
and it's going to run through its process, which will go pretty quick. So just stay on the line. And slowing down. Okay, so that's done. So now we've got our model now that's um, a million uh, polygons. It doesn't even actually look that different. And uh, one thing that we can do is then I would hit colorize. And that's just going to actually do the, your vertex coloring, not your texturing or anything like that. And it just gives you, um, you know, a point, uh, basically color on the vertex. And that's probably going to take a little bit. Oh, no, it actually happened pretty fast. Oh, there it goes. It's still going. Sorry for that noise. Alright, so that took about two minutes or something like that, but the coloring is done so we can see basically what it's going to look like with the vertex coloring. And um, so that's it really. Now what we need to do is just go to here to the unwrap section. And like I said, you want to set this maximal texture count to something like 20. And I set my maximal texture resolution to 8192 by 8192. And then I hit unwrap and the, the unwrapping portion of it will go pretty quick. Right, so um, you just do that and you'll see it's creating your UVs and when it comes back you can see kind of, whoops, the density of your UVs, right? So if you were to zoom in there really tight, I don't know, this is probably, it's, the interface on Reality Capture is really awful, how you have to move around. So you can see it's pretty dense, so we've got some good UVs. So we don't need UVs anymore, we don't need the Simplify tool, we don't need any more selection on the scene. I'm just gonna reset the view. And the last thing that we would do is just coming over here under the reconstruction, you hit texture and it's going to run through texturing. And this is going to take a little while, so I'm going to stop and when it's done, I'll come back. But really, actually, this is pretty much it. So um, once this is done, we just have to export the model and, uh, and we'll look at those settings because you have to make sure that you export it with the correct settings with the, that UDIM property that I was talking to you about. So let me just cancel this and, uh, the, and I'll see you when the thing is done. Okay, so the texturing is now done and we're in the scene and you can, we can zoom in and we can take a look at it. All right, cool. All right, so it looks pretty good to me. And all we need to do now is export it to Houdini so that we can de-res it and bake it. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to the reconstruction. We're going to hit mesh. And this thing pops up. And then we're going to save it. So I'm going to come here to here, sidewalk test. I make a folder. I call it FBX. And hit save. OK. So these are the options that, I, that, that you need to do. Export texture is true. Texture file format, I do PNG. Um, and somewhere I know that they're set to 16-bit. I don't know where that is, but maybe that's just the default. And then embed texture is false. Embed texture alpha false. Export to a single texture file, false. And then texture type, UDIM. So you have all these options here. So false and then UDIM. And then like I said, if you ever wanted to export the cameras, what you could do is you could just say true and then it will actually render out all of the cameras in the scene and embed them into the FBX file as well as it'll undistort the images to be, tr you know, truly undistorted, uh, de-warped images that you could then use to reproject and paint if you had some areas that you needed in this particular case we don't need that so I'm just going to hit uh, no and then I'm going to hit OK and it's going to run through and it's going to export it right and then so that's finished and if we look in our folder now you can see 
then I have here's the sidewalk text, and I have all of those like 13, so that's some pretty high density texture actually. Actually, I'll probably keep this. Um, and then we could just open that up in Houdini, right? So we would come here to Houdini and open that up. I'm just gonna save. This is actually kind of a cool little texture and close that out. And then under Houdini, I go to File, Import, Filmbox, FBX. Instead of using the file mode, because this way we get all of the potential information that comes with the FBX, in this, if, you know, in this particular case, I'm not, not that that's going to matter so much, but so here, come here, hit accept. Ah, uh, let me import this new scene. There we go. Yeah, uh-huh. And there it is in Houdini, right? And uh, I always turn off here, uh, specularity, so that uh, we don't have to look at that and th it look at it shiny. And now um, 